serve as a level shifter. Okay, they also help me to level shift the signal from 0.5 volt to 1 volt. In between, I do not need any AC coupling. Okay, the baseband signal will not be cut. I have the advantage of area, and the baseband data can be maintained until the end for the uh, for the equipment to test this. Okay, so this gives you a way that uh, normally when you want to design 50 amp buffer, you can use a high voltage design. This will be much easy to maintain the signal swing and also minimize the interface uh, component, just like the C and R. Okay, this is the the thing that uh, you can benefit from mixed voltage design and many kind of high voltage designs. Uh, in terms of separate whole circuit, it's also the same. If you have a um, this switch is a, a thin outside switch at one volt, the the checking bandwidth, okay, the RC time constant is uh, bigger, but the distortion is quite low because the overdrive here and the nominality due to the switch is quite high. If you keep if you change this thin outside to fake outside devices, the checking bandwidth is smaller. If you put a CO and 2.5 volt, this is the standard supply of this device. You can do the tracking, but it's uh, compared with the previous one, it's slower. But the, the, port, the importance is that the distortion is also improving. Okay, So just a simple sample and whole circuit with one switch, one capacitor. What kind of transistor you should use at the sample switch is also depends on your requirement. You want high speed, you use the thin oxide. You use the higher linearity, you use the fake oxide. Both can use different kind of uh, voltage. Okay? Then you can optimize your performance, depends on your requirement. Okay? How can you generate a CO2 2.5 volt? CO2 2.5 volt is a high clock. I cannot use the thin oxide to generate, but you can use the thin oxide as the PLL, all at one volt design. Okay, this is good. You maximize the efficiency because it works as a digital circuit. One volt thin oxide is the best for speed and power. You add a level shifter, it's a 1 to 2.5 volt, as this one. You put this as a fake oxide, you ensure no device is overstretched, and then you can deliver a CO2 2.5 volt. Okay, this is the extra cons. Okay, so here we'll draw you extra power. Depends on your application. It may not be good for this one. If you use this circuit, one more PLL, with this circuit to drive to this here, the power will be can be bigger than this one if the core frequency go very high. Okay? So it depends on uh, what application you focus. If you want high linearity, small speed, the difference between them will be reduced. Then you may gain some benefit. Okay? Depends on what kind of uh, application you, you are targeting in. Okay? Um, one more example is about the low drop of regulators. Low drop of regulator is like this. Very really simple is that you have a PMOS pass transistor, and then you apply the OTA here, and then you go to the low, you can regulate this VR. The, the good thing of this one is that VG can be less than half, less than the VDD. Okay, you can see here, VG is less than the VDD. This can be easy generated by the OTA. But the bad thing is the VR maximum, because you have the drop out voltage here, okay? How, and, and because this is the, a drain node, you also need an external capacitor to compensate the loop. Okay, this is very expensive, or no one will like this. Okay, I do not want this exter external capacitor for every LDO. I have many LDO for SLC. Every one call for one capacitor will be huge cons. Okay, then people try to switch to MOS. If I use MOS, it's good. It's the capless solutions. Okay, and this is more stable. And the power supply rejection ratio, you can prove this is also better than this one. The impedance here is initially high, initially lower. Okay. Also, the problem is VR, you still have the drop out voltage. Okay. VR can never reach to the VDD. And another big problem is compared with this one, VG has to be greater than the VDD because here, this is the VDD, this is the VG. You need to ensure this one sufficiently overdrive. This VG can be on the supply voltage. How can you generate a OTA with VDD with an output voltage greater than the supply? It seems not possible for one supply voltage, okay? How about 2.5 volt? If you use two supply, okay, I, I propose you to use two supply. If this is the OTA, design at 2.5 volt with fake outside, to generate a voltage more than 1.2 is possible. Now it's possible. 
And then you also achieve this catalyst, stability, everything. And more important here, we out, if this is a 2.5 volt, the V out can be 1.2 volt. I do not have any drop out voltage. Uh, virtually, you actually have drop out voltage here. This is 1.2 volt, but a uh, 1.3 volt. But what I'm showing you that if you want a 1.2 volt for your circuit, internal circuit, this one can give you exactly 1.2. You do not need a drop out voltage, okay? And this is cables, okay? This is also um, a possible solution. But one important fact is that if I have this one at 1.2, this is 2.5, the voltage, the power that you lost, every one milliamp you lost 1.3 millivolt because here you drop 1.3 millivolt, yeah, right? This drop out voltage depends on the current, okay? You want to deliver one milliamp to the load, you lost 1.3 millivolt at that MOS transistor, okay? So this circuit will be more benefit for ultra low power circuit. If you decide very low power, the current that you require is low, but the voltage can be 1.2, this circuit gives you some uh, advantage to, to regulate the supply, okay? This is um, one concept I want to um, comment to you. But the low drop of regulators not only can be applied on the top, if you look at the today complicated SOC, there are many, many circuits uh, working with the ground, so you also add a PMOS, okay? This one regulates the supply, this one regulates with the ground. You put a coin circuit, for example, very sensitive circuit, for example, a oscillator, VCO, a wing oscillator or a LC oscillator, you can put it inside here. You keep this as a work as 1.2. It's the same as a normal circuit, 1.2 work for a VCO, it's okay. You regulate this one, you drop out the voltage at 0.6, around 0.6 volt. Everything is okay. Now, the VCO only see these two internal supply, and your VDD noise and ground noise will not bother me anymore. Okay? You improve the power supply rejection ratio for both the VDD and the ground by using these uh, two regulators, one on top and on the bottom. It's also uh, capless and very good stability. And of course, the coins, as, as I told you, because you add the MOS and PMOS, they will eat you, your, your power, okay? Every one milliamp of current will eat one, one of the milliwatt of power drop on these two transistors, okay? That's what people normally call low drop out. I want to be very small. Then the drop out voltage will be, the loss will be small. But for this example, I, I on purpose put this higher, okay? 0 0.6, 0 0.6. But the power loss look to be higher for per one milliamp, okay? If you decide this circuit with small current, this will be relaxed, and you may be able to tour it, okay? Okay, so we discussed a lot of examples that what I have um, collected from the literature, and I give you a lot of design skill that may be helpful for you. What I want to show you here for, for the end of, um, before we end, is this example that I decided back to um, 2010. Um, this is the design for um, mobile TV in 65 nanometer CMOS for full band applications. Um, before I start the project, the first thing is look at the technology features. This is the technology that I use. What kind of transistor it provides is a 1.2 volt, so-called low power transistor. 2.5 volt is for IO design. Other back end process is very safe. So metal, via contact, everything for the technologies are good for supply voltage from 1.2 to 2.5. You don't worry. 1.2 volt phenol side device, you also have the no VT, standard VT, and high VT, okay? So just for 1.2 volt device, you have three kind of threshold voltage you can select. For high speed, of course, you choose this one, okay? Um, another supply, another device is a 2.5 volt oxide device, just one VT. This is the, just like the 0.25 technology transistor, available for me to use. General metal over metal capacitors with metal one to metal five is this density, metal three to metal five is this density. Uh, low low requirement on additional mass. The the limit of this is a 5.5 limit, so it will not be a problem for me. I work at 1.2 and 2.5 volt. Okay, this can be used. How about mean cap? This also provide mean cap. You can see mean cap is very good. Five femtofarad per micron square is more area efficient. 
But the problem is, you can look at the, the, the leakage current for this mean cam, you also consider that if you have a very big bias on the, on the mean cam, you will lose a lot of leakage current. And actually, forward bias should be better than the reverse bias because the leakage current is very different. But the idea is to show you that if you really use the mean cam, the top electro should be greater than the bottom electro when you choose this because the leakage current is different. Okay? But both can work uh, for high voltage design and the density is very uh, good compared with the mo cap. Um, other, other component in the system is high resistive quality. So six kilograms per square is pretty good. Uh, deep ML is available. You have the ESD protection IO provided by the factory. It's the two kilovolt each human body model uh, proven. Uh, the capacitor at by every pad is around one picofarad. Okay, I look at the technology profile before I start to do the project so I can show you. Uh, when I Design my circuit, I know this kind of component are in hand, and then I choose the start to choose the circuit architecture. Uh, a little bit more about the mobile TV standard is that you have a many standard in the world, okay, from Asia, Japan, Europe, China, US. They cover a like different kind of bandwidth. But if you want to design a full band mobile TV tuner just suitable for your uh, your, your your cell phone, then you can see the TV program. In the uh, worldwide, the best way is that you cover full band. You decide one tuner cover all this free band. Okay, one key concept here: they do not, they are not continuous coverage. Not just from this one until this one. They are free separated band because they are separate. We have more freedom to decide the circuit later. I will show you. Okay. Now, before I start my circuit, I tell you that this is the state of the art work. This is one is uh, I think it's from analog device. They uh, make this product. You can look at here. This is a complete SOC. 37% of the die area is still the RF and analog part. Okay? It's still quite significant. And you can see many separated RNA and external component for the matching. Okay? This can be expensive. Even you are putting in 65 nanometer process. So my objective is focused on here. I want to design a better receiver front end for this kind of full band mobile TV tuner. Compared with the area, this one is uh, just the RNA, the mixer, and the low-pass filter already consume 1.1 millimeter square. My objective is I want to improve this one in terms of area efficiency and performance. So I mainly focus on the red color part, okay? So this is my proposed architectures. I will uh, use a one single RNA for free band with only one external component for the matching, okay? In the mixer, I propose a technique so-called currently used between the mixer and low-pass filter. So these two guys share one current path. And then I put the filter in the current domain, as I told you, and I apply a high supply voltage, OK? To generate the phase LO, I propose one sort of direct injection lock technique. This direct <coughs> injection lock can provide you the four phase or eight phase, depends on the band that you require. Then you cover the required uh, frequency range with, um, without any uh, requirement on, without strong requirement on the PLL. Okay, this is the, my my target, and put this as a uh, as a chip for the full band. Uh, we need to make the frequency planning. Okay, for this one, the frequency planning is like this: we have the VHF band, UHF, and L band. For this one, because the harmonic frequency is in band, is overlapped with those kind of band. So I apply the harmonic rejection mixing for this part. For this part. Is also harmonic rejection mixing because the harmonic of this one is still in band. For this one, the harmonic is outside, okay? It's far away. So I do not apply the, the harmonic rejection mixing. So it's just a uh, mixing, simple IQ mixing. So I need uh, two types of mixing. One is with harmonic rejection, one without harmonic rejection to fit the requirement of each band, okay? So that's why you can look at the architecture here. I have three mixer, one square root of two one. This is a general harmonic rejection mixer. I can sum them together to become a simple mixer, okay? Um, the first circuit I want to show you is about the uh, balanced RNA. This report in this paper, this is a famous RNA. Just I show you, it's a common gauge and common source. By doing the impedance scaling, so the GM heater is bigger than this one by n times, and then the resistance reduced by n times, 
you can achieve a noise cancelling. This part, the noise of this one can be cancelled, and the noise figure can be um, can be optimized. The only uh, problem for this circuit is what the load is unbalanced. You can see here is out. This is R C G divided by N. They need to different resistor. So that's why the IAP2 of this circuit is quite low, just 20 dBm. And because the resistance is different, if you try a simple capacitor, the bandwidth at these two nodes are different. So you need an extra buffer, okay? For the VDD, because this is not a differential circuit, this does not go to differential. So the power supply rejection ratio is also poor. So another point is, um, how can we make game control? If you make the signal here very big, this transistor can be saturated. You change the gain at here, it doesn't help. Okay, these two transistors can be uh, saturated by your high input. So our rule is, I want to maximize the high IP2. I want to have a balanced output. I want to achieve a variable gain control together in one hour and eight. So this shows you the basic concept of my design. I apply the gain control here in front of the RNA using a switch, but can be bypassed if you do not need the iterations. And then you apply single to differential conversion to become two signal. And then I try to do the balancing, okay? I, I, I apply the balancing in the current domain before you can change back to voltage. Finally, after you do the balancing, you become a voltage by using a resistor, okay? Different from period architecture, they use the GM. The GM is as a, a, a match they use the low resistor to balance. But I use the balance in the current domain. The resistor is the match, they are the same. So the power supply rejection ratio will be the same and the output common mode will be the same, okay? So this is show you the, uh, the input part of the, of, the, of the RNA is the single to differential conversion. This is the still the uh, common gauge. This is the common source. The difference is I use the AC couple, the gain boosting, okay? This one only generate the AC signal to here, I put a cap. So the current of this node and the current of this node will be equal. Different from previous architecture, they use a N times of here to reduce the noise and boost the, um, cancel the noise and boost the noise, uh, improve the noise figure. But now I just keep the two current the same. I just add AC gain boost. <coughs> and this AC gain boost can also be reused. Look back to this transistor to create a loop gain here, okay? When you create a loop gain, the input resistance will be boosted by one plus eight times, okay? If I decide this resistance for very low value, for example, 33 ohm, not exactly 50 ohm, I can allow more GM, I improve the overall gain and noise figure, okay? This is the design. To implement this GM, one simple way is to use the inverter, because the efficiency of the inverter is very high, especially when the technology scale down, we better use the inverter a lot. Every time you, you talk about efficiency, inverter is the best, okay? With this architecture, you can generate a single to uh, differential conversions. Um, after the single to differential conversion is in terms of current, I propose this one so-called um, differential current balancer. This is just a capacity cost coupling by two times, okay? This one, one time, this is the second time. What is the advantage of this circuit? This advantage is because when the gauge and source, they look at the differential signal, okay? So a single transistor is actually a difference amplifier, okay? It's a difference amplifier. The amplifier is the difference of the signal, but not the signal. Look at here. If this one connect to here, the gauge, this one pass to the source, the GM is a VGS, right? So VGS is the difference of the input. I apply two times, I can do the balancing of the current in the current domain. So the equivalent circuit of this circuit is like this. You have an input resistor to absorb and you deliver a current at the output, okay? So they will be balanced. But for this circuit to work, you have a limitation that I need a double class code. Together with the input transistor I put here and the loading, there will be four transistor, right? Four transistor, a simple 1.2 volt doesn't work. I need to apply a 2.5 volt here, okay? With a higher supply, I put the signal in current domain and then do the balancing before you go to the low. 
This actually is enabled by the 2.5 I apply. Otherwise, this technique doesn't uh, doesn't work well. Okay, so we amplify the difference. If we amplify is the difference of the signal, we change the priority of the difference. So the signal just balance as like here as the equations. Okay, this one minus this one, another one is uh, this one minus another one. So they are equal, just different in the priority. Okay, so you amplify the difference, you cancel the imbalance between them. Okay. So this is an important idea that we balance the signal in the current domain, then they can be uh, better for the RIP2. Okay, look at the result I show you here. Uh, I go back here, so this is the input of the defensive balancer. This is the middle node, and this is the output, okay? We are one, we are two, we are three. Then you can see the figure here. The unbalance, gain imbalance here in terms of frequency from VR1 is quite large, more than 5 dB. And then after one time of balancing, it becomes around 2.5 dB. And after the third balance, after the second balancing, you'll be at the third node, will be more or less no in gaining balance, okay? And you can work over a quite wide range of frequency. For our target bandwidth, the gaining balance just less than 0 0.037 dB. So it's very really acceptable now, okay? How about the phase imbalance? You can see from VR1, the phase imbalance is very big. Then you change one balancing, it's like this. After second balancing, it goes like this. Okay, the phase balance in between the band actually is um, less than 1.87 dB. But actually this leap, this number looked to be high because at the low frequency path. This low frequency path actually is limited by the capacitor I put here, okay? If I put a very big capacitor, the imbalance can be improved, but the proactivity will be higher. I load down my RF bandwidth, I don't want. So this capacitor cannot be oversized. But if you don't oversize at low frequency, this will be open circuit. They cannot amplify the difference anymore. If you cannot amplify the difference, the, gain, the phase imbalance degrade. Okay? So this is the trade of that. When you select this capacitor, to make it at a difference amplifier, you also have a trade off between the bandwidth and the size of this one. Okay, so this is the, um, how we balance the phase and the size, the, the balancing of the phase actually limited by